Okay, hello, I'm uh, I'm Costa, and well, I'll, uh, I'll probably show a, f uh, a few works. I mean, I'm, I want to show you the works that I'm, I'm presenting at this show here, and uh, I mean, of course, explain some background information and show other works that are related to them. I somehow pre pre preceded them. Um, so I'm gonna start. Well, this is um, this is a, um, a piece that I started to I mean I started to to, to do in like 2006, and I finished it pretty much in 2008. So it was really it took me quite a while. And and in this piece, um, it's about, this piece is about my name, and it was like I made it um, a couple of um, years after I moved to Austria, and I and there I realized uh, that. Actually, people always tend to um, spell my name with C, and you've probably seen seen that on the invitations that you know. I actually I actually spell it myself with K, and I was I was wondering why why it is like that. And um, I mean, it, it is highly unusual. It might be a, a more uh, likely in in a country like the United States, uh, an English speaking country, that someone spells it with uh, with C, but in the German speaking world, it's, it's really uh, they, I mean, it, the, this this letter is um, hardly used at all. I mean, it, normally it's uh, it's combined with other letters like ch, sch, and so on, but it's never used alone. And I was wondering why people actually tend to do that. And through my observation, I kind of thought that this somehow refers to um, like phenomenons that mostly that are mostly uh, related to the tourist industry. Uh, and especially in Europe, uh, perhaps you've heard recently about that uh, tragedy like Costa Concordia, the ships. This is, I mean, this actually the, the biggest cruising company in Europe is called Costa, and it's spelled with C. And so, in in this work, what I do is I actually change the spelling of my name, and it, it, that explains here. Um, that that's that, that's the explanation here. That's not translated, but. Um, I, this it says that I actually um, want to change to use the, to use the letter C in the Latin spelling of my name, and so uh, this uh, the, the the work documents the process, and and in in that video I mean it consists actually of a video. This is the video uh, a photograph of a photograph of the result of the end result. This uh, this is the passport the new passport with my. My, my name is put like this, and this is uh, this is the whole installation. It consists of these three parts, including this uh, kind of uh, Picasso signature kind of. But what was interesting to me is that you know the, these things that are kind of very similar actually. Uh, that I mean they, they appear the same, but in fact they're not identical. Like uh, I mean I, I explain in the video I give some information that. Um, Costa with uh, you know uh, Costa as a you know as a as a name you know related to such brands actually uh, descends uh, I mean it refers to like Spanish or Italian word for coast and as a first name it as a given name it um, it descends from the name Constantine it's kind of like a nickname and I was I was interesting that the same kind of sign might have two different meanings. And uh, and I was interesting in this also in this kind of confusion that you might have at the end when, when you see my name spelled uh, being spelled in the same way and kind of I, I wanted people to actually start thinking in the moment that the video ends and the the other thing I I was also interested in was that the video had a purely documentary character because actually the, mo the important thing to me was that the name itself is is the artwork. So I mean, I, I really kept that documentary format, just as really as a documentary of this name, not really, really as the work itself. Uh, okay, so this is this is not a work by me. Uh, this is a uh, perhaps you know uh, Michelangelo Pistoletto, uh, the this Artipora artist, and. Uh, perhaps you're not so familiar with uh, with uh, a series of works that he's been developing throughout the, the last 15 years. Uh, they're based on a sign that he has invented. It's called the Third Paradise. 
And this is actually this is the symbol, and he uses it in many of his works, like this, for example, and and like this. Yeah, there, there are really many of these, and it's uh, the sign. Um, it consists of these two smaller circles that are connected uh, with a bigger one in between, and and somehow in, in, in his own words. It means the kind of the coexistence, the balance between human intelligence and the intelligence of nature, which is this uh, third paradise. Yeah, um, but I wasn't so much interested in that. So uh, what I did one day, I just uh, walked and uh, found these shoes in a shop in, in, in Italy. And they had pretty something pretty similar. So the decoration was really uh, very reminiscent of that. And... Uh, and I decided to buy these shoes and actually bring them to, to Pistoletto and uh, just show him the shoes and tell, ask him what he thinks about that. I actually have videos, I don't know if we'll have time for to, to see these videos, but you can also preview them on my website. And yeah, so here, here's me, I mean, you, you can also see the, the sign, this is, this is the entrance of his foundation. Um, and this is where I had the meeting with him. And, well, but I wasn't so much interested in what he's going to tell me. I mean, to, to me, uh, the, the essence of, of, of the work was bringing these things together. Because uh, when I talked to him, he, he told me that this symbol represents uh, two different things that need to be connected. That's what he said. And, and that's, that's exactly what I wanted to do with my work. I wanted to connect these two things, the, these shoes that kind of resemble his artwork, although they're not his artwork, and his artwork. I also decided that it's quite, quite good to have it because I, I, I realized that the work develops in a very symmetrical way. Like, I mean, you have these two shoes, you have this uh, symbol that consists of two um, uh, circles. Um, you have these uh, two similar um, 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 shapes, symbols, and, it, and it, I, th I think it's a nice ending. I thought it's a nice ending if you really have, at the end, you have these two artists that meet. Um, go to the next one. Okay. Um, this is, uh, th this, this pretty much uh, is based on, on, on the same thing, like in, um, uh, like in in the work with Pistoletto, where you know you know that the art object meets its um, kind of non-art devil, and uh, it's based on a story that I heard from a friend who worked at a gallery, and he told me that one day there was an exhibition and an artist has shown one of those uh, police roadblocks, and he apparently he's he's stolen it or something like that, I don't know exactly. And um, one day there was an accident at the gallery. Um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't serious, but uh, the gallery, uh, the, the alarm has activated. And so the police has come to the gallery. And, the, and after they checked and made sure everything's okay, uh, they have um, noticed the, the object. And I said, well, well the, oh, the, this is ours, this belongs to us, and they have taken it and uh, taking it with them and at that at that time the you know the um the cleaning lady has been the only person at the gallery so i met her and i and i interviewed her well she didn't she didn't want to be filmed so i only i could only record record her voice and ask her to exp to, to explain about that and i also had it i mean it was a, it was a double channel video um, where I actually, I mean, ev everything, everything was totally anonymous. I didn't, I didn't mention the name of the artist and, you know, the, the name of the, the cleaning lady. And, and I had a, you know, um, on the second channel, there were actors that were actually embodying the, these uh, characters that were appearing in her story. And it was uh, exactly this uh, kind of the same object with two different meanings that was in, in the, these two other works that I show. The, the first thing we, I mean, we're very familiar with uh, Duchamp and the, the and, and the ready-made, of course, and you know, just take, take, taking a, an everyday object and turn it into art. But the second thing is quite quite unlikely. That's 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 exactly what was interesting to me in the story 
that actually that to turn an object, an, an art object, into an everyday object. It doesn't happen so often. And, and even even Duchamp, he, he actually had that that concept of the reverse ready-made, but he never he never happened to make one of these. Um, and yeah, I mean, a, a reverse ready-made is like exactly this. And some, somehow the police managed to do it. And, um, okay. So this is this is another work that's that's part of the show. The this pistolero one is also at the show. Um, and okay, so um, when Jeff invited me last year for that exhibition, I, I was uh, I, I decided that, that I wanted to make a new work specifically for this show. And I was wondering what it should be, and I mean, at the end, I came up with the idea that um, actually, I mean, I had to apply for a visa um, to come to come to, to be here now. Um, and I decided that my visa is um, uh, is going to be my my work. To me, it was pretty much a kind of a continuation of the other project, the Costa project that you saw in the beginning. And so, I mean, especially also because um, the title of the show is Contemporary Icons, and in an, in, in Eastern Christianity, uh, icon is uh, is this picture you're familiar with, I guess. Um, that represents saints and and in icons that the, there there is that the, the holy canon with with capital C that that means that there um, there there there's certain very strict criteria according to which a, a saint should be painted and exactly this canon this criteria guarantees that this is actually a saint and it's pretty much the same with like identity documents. That certify the identity of, of someone. Um, of course, they they also have very strict criteria I, according to which these documents have to be uh, filled out. Uh, there wasn't so much room for intervention, uh, and I realized that the only thing I could do is probably uh, kind of intervene in the photograph that's going to appear in the visa. So this is uh, well, this is documentation of the process. This is that's it's, a, it's just a screenshot. I'm not showing it. it, it at the exhibition, and and this is actually the photo. I I decided that I um, that I'll that I'll take. I mean, I'll, I'll go to a, a photo studio, of, and I, and I ask the, and I ask the photographer to to take a photo of me, but like from behind, holding a mirror like that. So so he actually captured my face. My, didn't capture my face, but the reflection of my face in the mirror. So. Um, the face uh, on um, the, the the photo. I mean, the face on my photo here is flipped over, and and we we know uh, we know that uh, faces aren't symmetrical. No, no faces is no faces fully symmetrical. Um, yeah. Um, well, that's it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome.